So yesterday I did a lunch and learn with the central office staff on Google Sheets. So I thought I might as well share it with you guys too. So I'm gonna go through the presentation and some of you are probably really familiar with Sheets. So some of it you can skip forward. I like I like to share, I always watch any YouTube video on at least one 1.5 speed. So it sort of goes through quickly and I have a tendency to talk slowly. So if you notice under the description of the YouTube video, there um, are different times where I talk about different things. So feel free to skip forward to what is relevant for you. And this presentation that I'm sharing is also in the, um, in the notes. So let's get started. I was going to do a PowerPoint presentation, uh, but then it seemed a bit silly because I am talking about Google Sheets. So I, the whole presentation is actually a Google Sheet. So instead of slides in a slideshow, I have tabs here at the bottom of this uh, spreadsheet um, where I will go through this presentation. There are tasks that you can do kind of like the video I did on cleaning up your drive. You can stop the video, do, you know, do the task and then come back to the video and watch me do the task. Sort of a, I do, then you do. And then if you would like to make an appointment with me here in this sheet is if you want a, we do where we sit down and we do some things together, please do not hesitate to make an appointment on not just Google sheets, but anything that we um, have talked about in the past. So let's get started. As you can see, I put a picture here. I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. Um, the way that I did this picture is it's just sort of hovering over this area here. You have two options when you insert an image. You can just have it floating over like this one, or you can insert an image into a cell. So I'm gonna talk about the toolbar in a minute, but if you kind of think, what do I want to do? And then look for in the toolbar, what makes sense? So I want to put a picture into my sheet. So I want to insert something. So I'm gonna click insert and sure enough, there's image. Here's the choice, image in the cell or image over the cell. Now this one, I did over where it's kind of hovering and I can move it around. If I put an image in the cell, let me show you what happens. And I'm gonna go image in cell. And then like a lot of the Google products, you get multiple options to insert an image. I'm gonna grab something from my Google Drive. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of my cat, Rufus. And there's Rufus, it's a little, um, scary, but anyway, and I have a whole folder of Rufus the cat. So I'm going to grab this picture and there's Rufus. Now you can tell because I, I had the picture go in the cell, it's very small. So to make that picture bigger, I can't just grab it and move it out of the cell. I have to adjust the cell size so I can come over here. And if they make that cell bigger, then Rufus does get bigger. So that's how you would insert a picture in. So you have two options. You could have it hover over like this one, um, like that one where you can move around, or you can put a picture right in the cell, but then obviously you would have to adjust the cell if you want it bigger. So let's talk about the toolbar and some vocabulary with Google Sheets. So a, a new Google Sheet is also called a workbook. So you may have people call it a workbook and we have tabs at the bottom. So you can see here, instead of doing a Google slideshow, I did a Google Sheet and there are multiple tabs. So when we talk about different things, they are here at the bottom. If you want to add a new tab, you simply go down to this at the very bottom and you can click the plus sign right here. And just like a lot of Google products, if you just hover over a tool, it will, a little speech bubble will pop up and it will explain what that um, does. Another thing, which is this um, right next to the plus sign, it kind of looks like a hamburger with a bunch of <laughs> stuff on it. Uh, these lines right here. If you have a sheet that has a lot of tabs at the bottom, you can click that and it pops up all of the 
um, tabs that are in that sheet. It would, it's a nice way to navigate through a workbook that has quite a few tabs. So you've got, if you want to add a sheet, and then you have here all sheets. Um, the two different toolbars that we have, we have a word heavy toolbar, which is up here. So that's sort of like when you think about what you want to do. So if you want to insert or you want to add an image, you think I want to insert something, anything that has to do with the view, how people view your, your sheet is going to be under here. Like if you want to freeze a roll, um, if you want to zoom in. Um, so that's the word heavy uh, toolbar is up here. And then the, the more you use Google Sheet, um, this is the sort of the image heavy toolbar. So I do have to give a, a shout out to Sarah Kiefer. She um, did this presentation and I took a lot <laughs> from her presentation. I did, of course, contact her and talk to her before I did that. So I did want to give a shout out to her. She is a technology inter integration specialist in Southern Ohio. So the more you use Google Sheets or any Google product, you begin to know, you begin to recognize these symbols and you can use the toolbar instead of going into the word heavy toolbar. You can just kind of grab something from here. And of course, there is always the right click option, which gives you a whole menu of things to do. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So I'm not going to go through every single thing on this um, sheet. You have access to this, so you can definitely um, go through this. I did want to highlight some things, um, columns, rows, cells. So that's just some vocabulary. I'm awful about mixing up columns and rows when I'm talking. So hopefully I can edit um, mistakes out. <laughs> Formatting options. You can find it in the toolbar. Uh, you can change the theme of the sheet, the style, the font, the conditional formatting, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the data. So this kind of goes through each of these headings and what you can find in those. And then with the image heavy, we have um, all things numbers. So adjust the type of numbers that shows in the cell. So if you have a, um, a number that you want to make sure is denoted in um, currency and dollars and cents, you can just click that instead of um, going into format. It, that's just a real quick shortcut. If you want to cut a percentage down to a decimal point, you can just click on that as opposed to digging into the format and going through all of this. So these are just little shortcuts if you want to add a decimal point. So different things like that. And whenever you see the little shark tooth, that little, um, some people call it a carrot. I like to call it a shark tooth. That means that there are mo there's more options under there. So you always want to click on that because look, boom, we've got a whole bunch of options there. With the So always, always play around with the um, shark tooth. And like I said, if you just hover over um, something in, in Google, it, it tells you what's going to happen. That's the font. That's the font size, bold, which you guys know all that. So um, border styles. That's that one. Um, if you want to merge. All right. So you guys can go through that on your own because you have the, the link to this presentation is in the show notes in the YouTube show notes. Now let's get to actually doing some fun stuff. So like I said, um, in the, in the formatting and formulas, there are some tasks to do. So here are the tasks that we're going to do. You can watch me do them and then pause the video and go in and do them yourself. Or you can just sit back and watch me do all this stuff. So um, we are the first thing we are going to create a new tab in this sheet. So like I said before, we go down here to the little plus sign in the lower left hand corner and you click that and it adds a new sheet. Now it does call it sheet nine. So we want to change this to, let's call it my new sheet. And the way that you change the name of your sheet is you can one, click on the little shark tooth, because I said there's always good things behind the shark tooth, and you can do rename, 
or like I, I like to do it is I will just double click in the cell and then just write my new sheet. So that's how you can make a new sheet. I do like to add color to projects that I'm working on, just makes it a little bit more fun. So if you click on the shark tooth, you can change the color. So I'm gonna change this to red. So I know that this is the one that I created. So it sort of jumps out, but there are other colors um, that you, and you can even customize your color. If you know the hex code of a certain color, you can add that in. So there's a lot of uh, color options with Google Sheet. Now the next task, task two, is find cell A1 and write name. So it's kind of like Battleship. Um, you've got A and then you've got the number one and then you come here and then we're gonna write name. All right, we're moving right along. So task three, write five random names in column A. So columns are the ones that go up and down. And so we're gonna write, I'm gonna write Sarah. Of All right, moving on. Task four, pick one name, change the font, color, and size. So I'm gonna pick Sarah. I'm going to change the font to, I'm gonna change the font to Acme. I'm gonna change the size right here to 14. And then I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna highlight it, make sure it's all highlighted. And then I'm gonna change the color. See how I hover and it says text color? And I'm gonna change it to purple, because I like purple. All right, so now we're gonna select column B and C and make them wider. So you can adjust the size of your rows and columns by just hovering in between the two columns and then you see it turns into a double arrow. And you can just click on this and then move it over and see how B gets bigger. And then we're gonna make C a little smaller. Another trick that is really handy if you want all of your columns to be uniform. You want them all to be the same width. You can select the entire sheet and then you hover between, you can pick one, it doesn't matter which one, and then you get that double arrow and you can move it and you figure out what the size you want and then boom, every single column is that same um, width. So that is a nice trick. Also, if you just want to do, maybe I just want D and I want every other one, I can hold the control button and I can select the columns that I want. I have to click on the top to make sure that I get the entire column and then I can move those and then those columns are now um, the adjusted width. That's just a little trick that I wanted to show. Task six, select row one and make it taller. Just like when we adjusted the columns, you're gonna hover in between and then you get that double arrow and then you're just gonna drag it down and there you go. So now it's a little, it's a little wider. Task seven, select A1 and change the cell color. So Battleship, once again, A1. And then to change the cell color, you want to use this little fill, that little paint bucket, and we're just gonna change that to yellow. Okay, now we're gonna get into sorting. So our next task is to sort the names from A to Z. Now I do have a header. So if I would just go up here and do sort A to Z, it's gonna sort the name. And I don't want that. See how it took the header out and then it, it just shuffled them alphabetically with the name in there. So I'm gonna undo. And what I'm gonna do to make sure that doesn't happen is I'm gonna freeze this top row. You would look in the view to freeze your row because it's how you're viewing your, you know, how it looks, it's how people view. So you go into freeze and you can freeze one row, two row, or up to whichever row you are. So I have highlighted row one. So it's saying up to current row and then one in parentheses. So I'm just gonna do one row. Um, 
but I can also freeze the column. So that is handy if you have a whole bunch, maybe you have a bunch of assignments and it's going way over here to like Z, um, you can freeze that column also. So view and then freeze column one. And when you scroll, so if I would scroll over here, it freezes the list of names and I could keep going over um, and I'm not losing the name. And the same with, with freezing the first row. So see how if I had a bunch of students um, or staff, it keeps that name so I know what is going on. So now let's sort. So I'm gonna hover on A and I see that little shark tooth, and I'm just gonna click sort sheet A to Z, boom. Now they are sorted A to Z. When you go up to the Word toolbar and you click data, if you have nothing selected, you can't see how sort range, it's not an option, I can't click on it. So I need to highlight the entire sheet and then go to data, so then I could sort the range. So then I could come up here and I could do Z to A and then boom, I've got it the other way. All right, our task 10 is we are going to type a sentence in A7 and then wrap the text. So A7, once again, battleship, I've got A, I've got seven, here we go, great. All right, so you see how that sentence is going into my column B and if I just let go of it, it does show, but then if I would go into B7 and I type something in, then it's, it gets a little messy and then I lose this right here. So there are different ways I can do this. So I'm gonna highlight the cell where I want to wrap the text and I'm gonna go up here to this and this is the text wrap and then there's a little shark tooth and this gives me the text, the text wrapping option. So the little, this little one with like a little U-turn in it, that is the wrap the text, and it automatically adjusts the size of the of the row. Another way that you can do it is you can highlight the cell, go up to format, and then text wrapping, and and that's. See how this one, it, it has more words explaining as opposed to this just has symbols. Um, we've got overflow, wrap, or clip. So I would want to wrap it and there you go. All right, task 11 is add a column to the left of A and insert checkboxes. Checkboxes are one of my favorite things. I'm gonna highlight the column. Now you can insert a row and I can do this in different ways. So we can think the word heavy toolbar insert and then I want to do I want to do a column to the left or the right and our directions say left. So we're going to do a column to the left. Notice it keeps the format. It keeps that um, highlighted top there and it will also keep whatever font you had in that cell. So remember how we changed the font there? It will also change it. So it, it just, it basically copies that format. Um, now we want to add check, check boxes. So I'm gonna highlight a little bit past, so I'll go down to 15 and I want to insert check boxes. So I'm gonna go insert and down here are check boxes. So, and that, like I said, see how it did the formatting there with the purple and the, and the bigger um, font size. So I do want to clean that up. I don't like the look of that. So the way that you can match a format to another cell. So I want it to look like this one right here in 4A. So for me to do that real quick, I can go up to this paint format um, tool. So I'm gonna click on that. I've got the format that I want. I'm gonna click on this little paint brush or paint roller, I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna click in the cell that I want to change. So now that format is matched. So checkboxes are amazing.
Now let's get into formulas. So the next part of this in the task, so you can see I'm, I'm using this. These are all the tasks that I'm going through if you're wondering where those tasks are coming from. All right, so our next task, in the same sheet, type a random number in column B next to each name. So maybe we'll say assignment one. So we have assignment one, and I'm going to move, I'm going to widen this column so I can get assignment one. And we're just going to put some random numbers. All right, I'm going to get rid of this row with text. Next task is let's just add these numbers together. So this right here, this little Greek symbol is the functions. That's what houses all of the formulas that you can add to your Google Sheet. In this formatting and formulas tab, there's a link to the Google Sheet help. So this lists all of the Google Sheet functions or formulas, however you want to say it. And um, it just has it alphabetically, but you can also type in here. So if you want to know how to do a VLOOKUP, you can just type it in there and search that way. Let's add these together here. So the way we can do this is I want this so I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to put total here. I want the total to go in this cell. So now I'm going to click, go up here to the functions and I'm going to click, I'm going to go to the top and do sum. So then right there, it puts the equal sign and then the word sum, and then you have the parentheses and the, the cursor is, is waiting for you right there, it's blinking and saying, okay, what do you want to add together? So that's where I can go up here and click and just drag that down. These are the numbers that I want to add together. And if you notice, there's a little speech bubble right here that is 143. And that's where we need to use our actual human brain and kind of look and say, okay, does that make sense? Those numbers roughly added together. Yep, that makes sense. Yes, that is correct. Because um, if it said like 5,000 or something, you'd be like, okay, maybe I'm not use. maybe I'm not doing this correctly. But you're like, yep, that makes sense. And then all you need to do is click enter. And now you have the total and maybe you want to bold that so it kind of stands out. And what's nice about having that formula is if you would go in and you would change a number, so let's say Sarah turns her assignment back into me and she gets a better grade, I can just increase it and then we have the total, um, well, that, yeah, so the total for the class. <laughs> so now let's look at the average. Say we want to know the average for the entire class. So I'm gonna delete that formula and another way that you can do it is you can highlight the numbers you want to average together. So you want to know what the class average for that assignment is. You can grab those numbers and then click on the functions. And look, there's average right there that make it so easy. And then you click average. And so it's showing you, you've got the little speech bubble, you've got the formula and the range. So it's saying from C2 to C6. So think about Battleship. And if that looks right, all you want to do is hit enter. And then you that's your average, 29.4, which that makes sense. So always use your human brain <laughs> to look at that number and make sure that that does make sense. Now down here, it's your last task. I'm going to let you sort of go around and play with that is you're just going to pick a formula from that um from that sheet and just sort of play around a little bit. So now we're gonna move into more data and do some more advanced things with Google Sheets. So sticking with the same sheet, so let me get this um, task list up here for me. All right, so right here are the tasks that I'm gonna go through, but I'm gonna stick with this same sheet. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to delete this stuff here. 
So we are going to add a couple assignments. So we're going to add three assignments to your tab. So I'm just going to go assignment two. So if you want to copy something that's in a cell, so I'm too lazy to, to type out assignment again. So, and I might have like a bunch of assignments. <clears throat> so if I want to copy it to multiple cells, I just hover on the lower right hand corner and you can see that, that it turns into a plus sign. And I'm going to click on that and then I'm just going to move it over and then boom, assignment three, assignment four, and assignment five. Now this Google Sheets, it's data. So it will, if you have a number in that cell, it will just add to that number. It's very, very cool. And we probably don't need that many. So we don't really need that many. So I'm going to delete that. <laughs> All right. So tasks, let's add three assignments. We have the checklist, which is nice. I'm going to delete this average. Now let's do a drop down menu. You want to highlight the cell where you want that drop down menu to be. And you can do it two different ways. You can go to data and it's data validation or right click and da, 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 da. it's at the very, very bottom data validation. So you have some options when you click on data validation. You can list from a range, a list of items. You could make sure that the only thing that goes in that cell are numbers, or you could make sure it's only text. You could even put a date. So let me show you what the date looks like. It's kind of nice. And I'm gonna click save. So it doesn't look any different now, does it? Like it doesn't look any different than that. But when I double click on it, it brings up a calendar. So that is that calendar double. Because when I click on this one, nothing happens, nothing happens. But when I click on that one, I've got the date right there. So, so I could change this to, so if I put date completed here, data validation with the calendar makes sense. But we're going to redo that. Now, right click, go all the way to the bottom, data validation. We want to do a drop down menu. So we want a list of items. So I'm just going to write the list of items is yes or no. Oop. Yes or no is my list of items. Show a drop down list in the cell. Yep. You can reject input. So you can make it so no one can type in that cell if you want to, or you can add, um, do a little help text. You could set that helper to say, please use drop down menu. So it's you're rejecting the input, but then you're also very nicely saying, hey, please use um, the drop down menu. So let's see what that looks like. So you get a shark tooth right there. It Right when I hover over it, it gives me a little warning. Please use the drop-down menu. I'm going to click, and then I click yes. Now I can also, so I'm going to delete that. Now I don't want to have to go through that every time for everything in this, in this row because this is the yes, no row. So the way that I can do this is I can just hover in that lower right hand corner and drag it down. And now everyone has a drop down for yes or no. All right, so that is the drop down menu. Now we're going to add some numbers. So we've got assignment. I'm going to add a couple more assignments. So we've got So let's add some values here. All right, so we have some values here for um, our assignments. So let's average the assignments for JT. And he turned in his permission slip, so I'm going to put a little checkbox there. Now, if you notice, this, this column has no data in it. It's just a dropdown. So I want to make sure that I don't average in that column. 
So I'll show you how to do this. So we're going to do average. And right here is where I want the average to show up. So I'm going to click on this formula or the functions key. I'm going to do, I'm going to choose average and see how it's hovering. It's waiting for me to decide. I'm going to hold the control key down because I want to control what I select. If I do the shift, it will select everything. So I want to control what I select. So I'm going to, I'm going to just hold down this control key and I'm going to click on the cells that I want to average together. Notice how it's color coded. So I can see C2 is yellow, um, E2 is purple. So that's kind of cute. And then I can look, here's a little speech bubble. This is where we want to use our human brain and make sure that that makes sense. So I'm looking at these numbers. That makes total sense. I'm going to let go of the control and I'm going to hit enter. Now look at this. Sometimes, now this is Google's artificial intelligence at work. And it's saying, hey, do you want to autofill? That means, do you want to add this formula to everything below? And I am actually going to say yes, because I was just going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to click um, yes and look at that. So that is very nice. And I could send feedback to Google right now if I wanted to and say, thank you so much. I love that option. Da, 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 da. So now uh, what is another, um, what I could do, I'm going to insert a column to the left and I'm going to put totals because sometimes we might want to know the total for all of this. Go up there. So if I want the total, I want the sum. I'm going to click once again hold the control, hit enter, and then look at that. Thank you, Google. Click that. So now I have the totals and I have the average. All right, this is getting very long. So I do want to uh, wrap this up, but I did want to tell you about conditional formatting. It's one of, uh, I always keep saying this is my favorite thing, but I do use conditional formatting quite a bit. So let's say the passing grade for this assignment, this class, ignore the average, <laughs> is 120. So I want grades that are above 120, 120 or above, to be in green because they're good to go. And anything 119 and below, I want in red so that I can, so, so it jumps out at me. So let's do that. So now, Conditional formatting, just the word formatting, we're going to look in the format toolbar and right there is conditional format. And you can see we have options because I had this highlighted ahead of time, it's looking at it and it's going, okay, we're going to do that from H1 to H998. So I'm going to change that because I know I only have 40 kids in my class, so I'm going to change that to 40. Um, now here's the format rules format the cell. If the cell is not empty, well, that's weird. So once again, the shark tooth, you want to click on the shark tooth and there are other options. I am going to go to greater than or equal to, and like I said, the passing grade is 120. So if they have 120 or above, I want it to be green. Now, the default just happened to be green, which is nice, um, but I can go in and I can change that to a brighter green. I can change the font color to white so that it really jumps, stands out, and I can bold it if I wanted to also. Now, I'm going to say done, and we're good to go. I want to add another rule because like I said before, I wanted the kids that are not passing to be in red. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep that highlighted right there, add another rule, change that to H40. Now I want it less than or equal to 
219 because 219 and below is a failing class or is a failing grade. So like I said before, I want it to be red and red. I want that the, the, um, the font color to be white because sometimes when you print things, if you have that conditional formatting uh, with a darker color and you're printing in black and white, it usually comes out and you can't see anything. So always change your, your font color to white if you have a darker color. And it will apply it to anything right there. So I'm going to click done. And now it looks like a little Christmas tree, actually. I can go in and I can change. So let's say JT turns in an assignment and he just knocks it out of the park and he gets 100. So I'm going to change that. And I'm going to enter and notice he went a bunch of things changed his average change. I didn't have to do anything. It was automatically baked in there. His total changed the color changed. So now he has um, now he's in the green. So he's passing. So having those conditional format um, options already baked in is really it's very helpful. Um, and then you just set it and forget it. Um, and then if, if data changes, it automatically up, updates. So I want to show you one more thing with Google Sheets. So when you are typing in information, so I have a bunch of stuff. So I want the information in the students, each on its own line, but within the same cell. If I'm here and I just hit enter, it moves me down to the next cell. So let me show you. I'm going to click up here where I want the hard enter to go. And I'm going to hold the control button down and then hit enter. <clears throat> so you can see that now the information is on, is on two different lines. I could do the same with student. So I, I get, I, put my cursor right where I want the hard return to be, hit control, enter, and then I want students, control, enter, and then just hit enter overall. And then I have it on its own line, but they're in the same cell. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is um, sharing and protecting your Google Sheet. So sharing is just like any Google document. It's the best part of Google because you can share data. You could have a spreadsheet on map uh, scores that you are sharing with your entire math department and you guys are digging into the data. Um, so it is a beautiful part of Google. So up here in the upper right hand corner is this, we know this button well, is the sharing setting and you click on that. And it's just like every other um, Google document. You can share your Google Sheet with specific people. So here I'm sharing this with Michelle. You can um, put it in a link. Um, but you want to be careful that anyone with the link. So the way that this is set, you have options. Click on that little shark tooth and you could restrict it so nobody can touch it unless they are specifically added up here. So th the restricted means only people that you put in this top part. But if you wanted to open it up with link sharing, you can click that right there, click the little shark tooth, and then the next level, it opens it up to Washington Local. And then notice over here, you have the option if you want them to view it comment on it or actually be able to so that's sharing stuff get sharing in there change sharing. data update okay. things protecting um, sheets so you so have many options there are times when you are sharing a sheet with a bunch of people uh and you there's a tab that you don't want anyone to mess with so the way that you can do that is you you can protect that section of your Google workbook. You could um, protect that cell. So let's say I don't want anyone messing with this, my new sheet that I made. So I have all this data. This is my class. I don't want anyone messing with it. So right here uh, is the shark tooth again. So if I click on that, 
right there it says protect sheet so i'm going to click on that and it gives the name of the sheet so you can make sure but then it also has a drop down and it's like oh i meant to go into the title page because i don't want anyone to mess with the title page and then you click set permissions so the title page set permissions and then you have your editing permission options. So I could restrict people who are editing this range um, to only me, or I could set a warning so that if anyone goes in, it'll be like, hey, Sarah doesn't want you messing with this. I'm gonna click restrict who can edit it to only me, and then I'm gonna click done. So now when I go to the title page, you can see there's a little lock there. So that lets anyone know that that uh, title page is locked. No one else can go in and edit and mess with it. You can also protect a specific row or column where you don't want anyone to mess with that information. So if I wanted to protect it where only JT can put things in, so maybe it's a self-reporting uh, what he thinks he got on an assignment before I grade it. So he's putting this information, but I'm sharing the entire sheet with the class, but I only want, you know, I only want Pete Page <laughs> to enter information for, uh, for him. So I want to highlight that, I want to highlight that row and then I'm going to go under tools and protect the sheet, but I only want this range. So I'm going to click it. I don't want sheet. I want range. Okay. So it says my new sheet, which is the tab that I'm working in. And then it's got two to two. So it's got that entire row two. And then I'm going to click. Okay. Then I'm going to set my permissions and I want it to be custom. So I want it to be not me put in my son's email address here because I only want JT to touch that cell. And then I'm going to click done and changes are saved. So I shared this sheet with Gabby, our fake student. So let me go in as Gabby and see if she can edit JT's information. So let me see. All right, so now I am Gabby and I'm gonna go in and see if I can um, edit JT's information. And if she can, I will just delete this from my presentation. So right now going in as Gabby, I if, if she would go into JT's information and try to change it, it would pop up with this warning saying that um, she is trying to edit a protected cell or object. So no one can go in there and change JT stuff. So that's how you can protect a specific area. And the same with the title page. If she, if she would go in and try to move stuff or delete stuff, she can't. So I'm trying... Oh, now the links still work, <laughs> but if she would try to delete the picture of Rufus, she cannot. So Gabby cannot wreak havoc on a protected sheet. Also, whenever I have um, a sheet, if I know that I'm not going to add any more rows, I'm going to get rid of all of these extra rows that I have. I'm going to highlight them. I'm just going to click keep deleting and deleting and deleting until they are all gone. And that, I just like that better. Um, you know, it's a, it's a personal preference, but I do like to get rid of the columns and rows that I'm not using. So especially if I'm sharing this data with other people, I think it just looks a lot cleaner if there's not a bunch of empty rows and empty things. Um, so like you see here with this, and there's no data in here, it's just information to you, it's tasks for you to do. 
um, I got rid of all of the extra rows and columns. I just think it looks neater. Okay. So I keep thinking of other things that I can tell you about Google Sheets. And this, I swear, is the last one. So I didn't, I, I forgot to mention about sorting and filtering. We did sort that one row um, alphabetically. So we did that. Um, but I did want to show you how you can filter data and sort data. And you can actually filter by color. So when I would meet with a student, I would color code some students. So it was red, yellow, and green. Now, it was not a conditional formatting. So we have coloring here, but it's conditional formatting based on data. I would just go in and be like, Sandy, I need to meet with her again. So I would um, color code that red. And then maybe um, Sue would be yellow and Pete Page <laughs> would be green. And I'll make JT green too, just so we can have two. So this is the color coding system. So if you wanna sort by color, let me show you how to do that. There is this little image right here that is create filter. So I'm gonna click that. And then what happens is you get these little filters here and think of it like a coffee filter. Not everything is gonna come through when you do a filter. When you sort things, you can see everything, like sorting your sock drawer, you can see all of your socks. But filtering things, you're only going to see what you want to see. So if I would filter, so I could filter by color, and I can sort by color. So if I filter by color, and I only want to see the red, so I just want to see the red kids. So I click that and that's all I'm going to see. I'm only going to see Sandy. So now let's sort by color. I'm going to click the filter. I'm going to do sort by color. Notice it picks up the fill color and it picks up the fact that one of our text colors is purple. So if I click on the text color, it says, do you want the purple or the black ones? So let's do it by fill color and I'm going to sort it by red so that the red then pops up at the top. Filtering data and sorting data are different. If I wanted to filter this data, I would come up here and I just wanna see the yeses. So I go down here and notice I'm seeing everything, clear that, and I just wanna see the yeses. So I'm gonna click yeses and then I'm gonna click okay and that's all I see. So if I wanna clear that, I just wanna select all because I wanna see everything and click okay. Or you can do the undo button. I love the undo. Or you can just click off of the filter and they disappear. So that is how you sort by color and filter by color and sort and filter um, by different things in your sheet. So here's some resources that I shared. This is in that last tab. It's just, of course, we got Eric Kurtz here. He's amazing with his stuff. And there's a link. So you've got the little picture. You've got the um, link here. And then um, just a little summary of what you'll get. So that is an introduction to Google Sheets. There's so much more we could talk about. Um, please do not hesitate to make an appointment with me if you want to dig in deeper with, <clears throat> with Google Sheets. And... Um, all right, you guys have a great day.